Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Alex and this is The Car Creative. And in this video, we are celebrating 10,000 subscribers. It's unbelievable to see where we've come from and how we got to this place. Uh, I'm just beyond grateful to every single one of you. If this is your first time here, hey guys, it's nice to see you. But to everyone else, it has just been amazing. All of the support, you guys have been so incredibly kind. Uh, I love chatting with you guys. So thanks so much for subscribing, commenting, liking, following me on Instagram, everything. If you guys are messaging me, I see it. It's just so encouraging. Every single one of you guys hitting me up in the DMs or in the comments below. I do see all of those messages. Sometimes I don't have a ton of time to get to those messages. So what I'm doing today is actually a 10K Q&A. I let you guys submit questions to me, everything from car photography to what I do for work to gear to how I get paid to how I get access to cars. You guys asked a ton of questions. And in this video, I'm gonna be answering as many of them as I can, because they're really good questions. And hopefully they'll be helpful for you in getting work as a car photographer or enjoying being a car photographer. And also you'll get to know me a little bit as this is a uh, part of my channel and this is what we do. So, so the first question here is from Henrik Tandberg. He asked a really cool question. He said, sorry, it might be a bit personal, but hey, let's get personal. That's what this is all about with 10K. But do you do this full time? And what did you do before this? Are you self-taught or did slash do you work with something related? So I am not a full-time car photographer, but I have been working in the creative field in photography and videography for almost eight years. I still work full-time for a private school here in Calgary as essentially their marketing guy. I create content for them. We build out their websites. We make videos for the school and we take photos for the school. And the easiest way to explain it is that it's essentially commercial and marketing and the beauty about this job is when I started at that job eight years ago almost I knew nothing about photography or videography I didn't know what aperture or ISO or shutter speed was zero but my boss is an amazing boss he's super visionary and he enabled us to just learn and so I spent so much of my days on Vimeo or YouTube learning how to light interviews or how to use cameras or what codecs mean or what lenses are best or why apertures work a certain way so this job enabled me to learn on the go and now eight years later I've had access to a ton of great cameras, a ton of great lenses, and shot a ton of different types of content that's enabled me to transition those skills into car photography. So a lot of you have asked, when did I actually start in car photography? Well, like probably many of you, car photography has been a passion for you know a long time, or cars in general. Like I've always loved any type of car, like supercars or normal cars, or I'm not such a technical car guy, but I just like the way that they look and the way they sound and the way they make you feel when you drive them. So that's why I really got into it. So I got into car photography about two and a half years ago. That was kind of the point when I was able to transition the skills that I'd learned from my full-time job into what is a passion job. Rosnell2006 says, hey, awesome video, thank you. What was my old job? Just told you. Do you keep it? Yes, I do keep it. And how did you transition from one profession to another? Well, that leads me to where we are today. So I work a full-time job still, eight to four for a school. The beauty of that is I actually get my summers off, fall break off, Christmas break off, and spring break off. So it's kind of the perfect job for me to be able to sustain my home and the life that I have with my wife, but also really enjoy the summers, which is great for shooting cars. So I'm kind of on like a five-year plan journey. Uh, we're about to start year three three in September and the goal for that is not so much that I can leave my job because I really like it actually um, but that if after this five years I'd be able to transition or have enough income from car photography or other clients that I would maybe be able to leave if I needed to. Whiskey21 submitted a question here that I really like and it's really relevant to I think everything that we're talking about here and he said can you trace your passion for car photography back to a particular photo that when you took it you thought yes this is what I want to be doing I can uh, it's not so much a photo but it was the experience behind the photo uh, I don't know if you guys have watched my video with the McLaren that day was kind of the day that got my fire 
freaking roaring for car photography. I mean, it was the first really like supercar that I'd been in, that I'd shot. And not only that, the guy that I was shooting with, Max, was just an incredible guy, super encouraging. And uh, that's kind of just got my fire going. And I think passion is going to be what really drives a lot of your next questions because as fun as car photography is and as much as money as you can potentially make at it, if you're not actually passionate about shooting cars, then whether or not you make money on a shoot or you want to shoot a certain car, you really should just be getting joy from the experience of shooting those cars. So that'll get us back into some of like the paid stuff versus not paid stuff that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Okay, so one of the next questions was, how do you get clients or how do you find new cars to shoot? This is a great question. When you're starting out, it can be really tough. Um, it's actually very interesting, guys. I don't own a nice car at all. I drive a 2006 Honda Civic and when I started doing this, I still was driving a 2006 Honda Civic. You just gotta reach out to friends, ask about their cars. I don't know if your parents have nice cars or your parents' friends have nice cars that they might be willing to let you shoot. You just gotta reach out to everyone. How I started getting my clients was I was just starting to get into car photography. Again, passion led me to talk to a friend about it and that friend had a connection at a Toyota dealership. Months later, that turned into an actual partnership where I worked with Toyota. So. Funny thing is, I was shooting a Toyota minivan, I was shooting their Sienna, when I got my first McLaren gig. So you just don't know what can lead to the next thing. So really the answer to the question of how do you get clients is really you gotta network, you gotta tell people you're a car photographer, show your passion, show your portfolio, build a dope portfolio, make sure that your photos are banging so that you can actually show up and be like, this is what I can provide for you. All right, so a lot of you guys did ask how to make money as a car photographer or like a first time shooter. That's a really interesting question because making money can be really tough as a car photographer, to be honest. Some people get really lucky or you have those connections at car dealerships. In my experience, car dealerships has been the way that I've made money. And the reason for that is they have marketing budgets, right? Like they actually have money to spend on advertising. The difficult bit is getting in with the right dealer or the right manager or with them at the right time because the seasons can change or they can be super busy or not busy or have actually marketing money or not. And then you get down to personal shoots with just guys that own nice cars. Should you be charging? How much should you be charging? Oh my gosh, this is like what we all struggle with, right? So do I charge for my personal shoots? Sometimes, sometimes I don't. If it's a car that I really want to shoot, I'll reach out to them and say like, hey, your car is amazing. I would love to shoot it. Would you be open to meeting with me? Maybe making a YouTube video or something. And a lot of the time, the guys are interested in a shoot because my portfolio looks good. So they want those quality photos. Now, do I charge them? Sometimes they actually now are at the point when I have a quality portfolio, they ask, oh, like how much is it going to cost? At that point, I tell them my fees. And if at that point they're still open to shooting, awesome, that's a paid gig. What should you charge? I'm gonna leave that up to you because it is such a wide range of quality and what it's worth to you and what it's worth to them, what your time's worth. So I'm gonna leave that up to you. Just charge what makes you happy. And if you're passionate doing it, freaking just go shoot it for free. And then if they give you 20 bucks, 100 bucks, 300 bucks, 500 bucks, sweet then you're winning, uh, that's that's awesome. But just do it because you love it, build your portfolio, and then you never know what opportunities can come from that. Here's my biggest recommendation for making money. Diversify. I shoot a ton of work that is not car photography. Like this week, for example, I was doing drone videos for an architecture company. So much of what we do in car photography translates to so many different areas, right? Like portrait, landscape, detail work. This is all stuff we're doing in car photography anyways. And that's why I'm building this channel around cars. It's because so much of what you do out there, you can learn through shooting really cool cars. But don't limit yourself to just car photography because you can make money shooting portraits for companies or making videos for companies because video is on the rise. So maybe learn how to do videography as well. Um, diversify your portfolio. Maybe make a car specific Instagram and just like another Instagram or you have other work. I think that will help you grow and that will help give you more options for making money. Fellow Beetle 82 asks, how do you market yourself then and how do you get new clients? Well, the way that I've chosen to market myself is through my Instagram profile and as well building a YouTube channel because I'm hoping over time to build a big enough YouTube channel or have enough followers on Instagram 
that people actually understand that my work is quality and they'd be willing to pay me for that quality work. So that's how I've chosen to build my portfolio. You can also go to my website. You can see the actual work that I've done there. You can go to my Vimeo and see like my professional client commercial work over there as well. And when I reach out to clients, I just try and say like, hey, this is what I do. This is the quality of my work. I would love to work with you blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But at this point in my career, I'm starting to get people coming to me and asking for my services. So Vinay uh, 1K, he asked a couple great questions, but the one that I wanted to answer for you guys is why do I do this? Why am I doing YouTube? Why am I sharing my secret sauce? Or he, he said, why are you sharing your secret recipes? I think it's a really interesting question. Yeah, the car photography world can be competitive, I guess, right? But at the end of the day, the way that I see this is I'd rather make friends in the industry. I'd rather teach you guys how to do this craft so that you can go and get more jobs yourself or just enjoy this craft, right? Who am I to say like, I'm gonna hoard all my wisdom and then be the only one working for all the hundreds of thousands of car dealerships in the world or shooting the hundreds of thousands of supercars in the world. That's really selfish. I don't wanna do that. I'd rather make friends with you guys, create opportunities for both of us so that we can all enjoy this amazing genre of car photography. It's not like you're gonna come to Calgary, steal my clients, take my work. I mean, please don't do that because I, I need the work, whatever. Like, let's just learn together. Let's grow together. That's what this YouTube channel is all about, is building a really cool car community. So if I've got secret recipes, I'm here to share them. And that's kind of what it's all about. And the beauty of it too, it's like, this is a two way street. Like you guys have been so encouraging. You guys have so many great ideas. Oftentimes you guys will share in the comments down below other techniques that I may have missed in my video. So it's super helpful. We all win. It's awesome. A lot of you guys ask how to build a portfolio. Reach out to guys on Instagram. When you find a car that's in your location, I'm very fortunate to live in Calgary where there's a pretty big city. Lots of money is here. So there's lots of nice cars. When I find them on Instagram, I actually save it and I create a folder called Calgary cars. So when I've got free time, I reach out to these guys, see if they're available for a shoot. So sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no. If you don't have a ton of work on your page, you're probably going to have to offer to do it for free at first until your portfolio is built out enough and they maybe start asking you how much you charge or you can give them your rate right out the bat, whatever. It can be really hit or miss with if they want to pay you or not. A lot of these guys probably spend all their money on their cars, so they probably don't want to pay you. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a funny industry. So Jamie A asked a really fun question what would your dream car be to shoot and where city country landscape whatever that's a really fun question I'm actually shooting one of my dream cars this evening so I'll be making a video about that well I definitely want to drive pretty much all of Europe I'm really 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 falling in love with the Porsche brand ultimately I'd probably go with the Porsche 911 the 992 Turbo S and drive it all the way through Europe because I just think that would be so fun. Uh, that's dreams, that's goals. That's really why I'm starting this YouTube channel because I just, I want to create these types of opportunities and uh, just enjoy cars. Thanks for that question, that was, that was a fun one. Uh, my brother actually asked, what's my favorite edit that I've ever done? Give me actually a minute. Picking up a photo. All right, guys, so this is my favorite edit and I just decided right now why the heck not get it printed. And here it is, this is the McLaren 570S. This photo started a lot for me and uh, let me tell you the story about it. This shoot was an absolute dream come true. It was through reaching out to someone on Instagram, seeing if he wanted to do a shoot. I had access to this airport hangar through my father-in-law who owns this company. And when I reached out to him, he actually asked if he could bring along four of his supercar friends. So there's a bit of a story behind this one. You guys can go watch the video up here somewhere. It was just an absolute dream shoot. But this frame was one of the very first kind of clicks of the shutter and it just blew my mind. I'm just so stoked with this photo. I love the colors in it. I love the wings. I love how it turned out and it kind of started to shape even my editing style. ClickMod asked a whole bunch of questions so I'm going to rattle them off for you. How do you reduce glare other than a CPL filter? I get people, I see people getting the cleanest pics whether they're in a parking garage or somewhere with lots of lights. Is it Photoshop? 
Probably, if it's lots of lights, you probably are taking that out in post or they are using a CPL filter. How to not get glare, don't shoot around places that have a ton of lights, really, that's that's kinda it. Uh, I highly suggest using a CPL filter. Cars are just reflective. How do you take a clean night photo of a car? Keep your ISO low, 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 use a tripod, low aperture, low, 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 Shutter speed. How big is the difference between the upgrade from the A7 to the A6500? It's pretty big. Uh, full frame cameras are just incredible. You can get way better low light capabilities. The A6500 is still a super quality camera, but it does have limitations. You're gonna get noise sooner, but you can still get really amazing clean images out of those Sony A series cameras that are lower. If you could go back in time, what would you tell yourself when you were just getting started in automotive photography? Oh start a YouTube channel sooner. <laughs> how do you get clients starting out? How to get Instagram engagement? How to get Instagram engagement? Watch this video about my Instagram uh, and you already know about the clients bit. See dealerships not taking the best photos. Yeah, that's why they need us folks. A lot of light glare. How should you approach them to do work for them? Carefully, kindly, uh, and with a very low expectation that it's gonna work out, you're probably gonna need to reach out to them, not at the end of the month, because that's when they sell a lot of cars, not really at the beginning, because they're going through all the financing of all the cars they sold at the end, so probably middle of the month, and it's probably best to show up in person, because if you just send an email, they're just gonna be like, cool, no thanks. Sometimes your edits look fake. Do you have any tips to make photos look realistic but stylish at the same time? I always try and keep my, my edits really clean uh, and then try and add style, but I kind of use split toning or some of the radio filters and graduated filters to add that style back in. So tons of my YouTube videos will help you out with that. Thanks for all the questions. A lot of you guys asked questions about gear. What's a good camera to use? Possibly under a thousand K which is a good price point. Uh, my personal experience has been with the Canon 5D Mark II, which you could probably get a good used one. Uh, I've used Canon 5D Mark III's, which is probably still pretty expensive, but I've also used the Sony A-series cameras, so the A6300 and the A6500. Those are pretty cheap bodies, and I've done a lot of professional work with them, so get to know those cameras. I've found them to work pretty well, but ultimately I would suggest trying to get into a full-frame sensor. It opens you up to more lenses, and also just a cleaner image. If you do have more questions, please put the comments down below. Uh, I'll try and get to you guys. The best way to reach me right now is through the comments on YouTube or comments on my Instagram. I do see everything and I'm making lists on cool videos we can shoot. Uh, tonight I am shooting one of my absolute dream cars uh, and I'm gonna take you guys along with me and do a quick lens review on my absolute favorite lens for car photography. But other than that guys, I just am so thankful for your participation, for hanging out with me on this journey of car photography. I'm still learning, so don't take all of my words as whatever true. It's like, let your journey be your journey. This has just been mine, and I'm glad and happy to take you guys along and teach you everything that I know. Uh, over eight years of working in this industry, I have learned a lot on cameras and how to use them, and then transition this into car photography because that's my passion, it's my joy. So stick around, guys, subscribe, because we're gonna be making more content like this. We're just getting started. 10K, I'm so excited to see where we go from here. And of course, I can't do it without you guys. So thanks so much for being a part of this, guys, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.